In this one, we will learn about layouts in Drive. By default, how we position and size things in Drive is what we need. But in some cases, we need a controlled behavior in terms of positioning and sizing like this one right here. Here, I have an icon and a label text beside the same. And I am maintaining an imaginary space in between these two whenever I am changing their position or their size. Like if I go ahead and change the size of the icon, I have to go ahead and move the label a bit further to maintain that imaginary space and also change its position to make sure they are aligned perfectly. Up until now, we had to do all of that manually. But with the recent update in Drive, we can perform all of that using layouts. So let's go ahead and add a layout to these two elements. To add a layout in Drive, we can either use the layout tool from the toolbar, that is this right here, or we can make a selection of the elements to which we want to add a layout and use the layout from selection option in the inspector. Now, before I add the layout, take a look at how the hierarchy is right now. That is our icon and the text label and what it will be after adding the layout. So let's go ahead and add the layout. And this is what we get. Using layers, we can systematically lay out our elements where we can control the sizing, its positioning, the direction in which the items are laid out, their alignment, and also the spacing between and around them. Now, before we move on, let's go ahead and take a look at the hierarchy. That is this right here. Right at the beginning, we have our layout. And in this case, we have a row layout. That's why the name. And inside of the same, we have layout children. Each layout child has our element in turn. That is in this case, the icon and the other one has the text label. How layout works in Rive is we have a layout child which wraps around our original element and specifies how it should be sized and positioned inside a layout because each children can have different requirements. And the parent layout object lays out all of the children together depending on their requirements. Let's go ahead and take a look at the properties of our layout. In the inspector, you will find the sizing and position options at the top. Then we have the direction of the items, that is in which direction the items are laid out. By default, it is row or depending upon how the elements were when you added the layout. In this case, it is row, but we can switch it to column, that is a top-down layout or the reverse of both of the directions, that is column reverse or row reverse. Let's set it back to row, which we wanted initially. And then we have the alignment options. We can set the alignment in the vertical and the horizontal direction, that is from top, center, bottom to left, center, right. In this case, it is set to top left. That's why we have the icon in here, not in the center. To switch it back to center, we can simply select this option right here. That would be left center like this. And if we want it to be at the bottom, we can have it there as well like this. But let's undo that. And then we have the gap between the elements. That is, we have the icon and the text and we want it to maintain a gap or a space between the same. And that's what we control from here. That is the horizontal gap. If we had a column, we would have used vertical gap, but in this case, we are using horizontal gap. It is set to 15, but we can go ahead and increase or decrease the same. Finally, we have the padding and margin options to add some spacing around the elements. Let's go ahead and take a look at the position options of our layout. Right now, it is set from the left and the top of our artboard, that is these right here. And that's why we have these lines running from the layout up to the artboard with the distance in between as the numbers. We can go ahead and change its position based on this distance from the left or from the top. 
We can change the sides as well. That is from where we are calculating this distance. And this will allow us to pin this layout object to our artboard when its size changes. To notice the same, let's go ahead and change the left side to right side instead. And to do that, I can simply select it from this dropdown or select this in the options. Now it is pinned to the right side of our artboard. And if I go ahead and change the artboard size, it stays pinned there no matter what the size of the artboard is. So it will maintain this distance from the right side. And I can go ahead and give it some set values. Let's say 100 by 100 pixels apart. And whatever the size of the artboard is, it will maintain that distance. I can set that for bottom as well instead of top. And assign it 100 as well. And we get the layout object pinned to the bottom right corner of our artboard. Similarly, you can go ahead and pin this to any corner of the artboard. But what if we want it to be pinned in the center? To do that, we have to set the distance from the left and also the right or the both directions. So in the dropdown, we have this option that is left plus right. If I go ahead and select that, notice how we have these two lines running in both directions. So I can set something like 150 by 150. Notice how our elements are in the left side, even though the layout object size is bigger. To place them in the center, all we need to do is set the alignment to center center like this. And now if I go ahead and change the size of the artboard, the layout object will stay in the center no matter what the size is. Now, if it goes below a certain value like this, it still stays pinned 150 to the left. I can simply go ahead and set it to 0, 0 like this. So it will work on smaller sizes as well. Same goes for the top and bottom as well. From the dropdown, you can select top plus bottom, set it to 0, 0 and it's already placed in center. So we will get the layout object placed in the center, no matter the size of the artboard. Another use case of a layout like this is to add a background fill. Now, if you've had created background fills for text layers before in Rive, you would have to use constraints, bones, targets, and so on. But with layouts, it's as easy as adding a fill layer like this. We can go ahead and select a custom color, a solid white in this case, and that's what we get. We can go ahead and add some spacing between the elements and the edge of the container with padding right here, that is horizontal padding and vertical padding like this. And if you want to add custom values for each side, you can toggle that with this icon right here. Let's set it to 15 for horizontal padding and 10 for vertical. We can also add some corner radius to our container of the layout with the corner option right here and setting it to a desired value like this. Similarly, I'll go ahead and create more icon labels using these icons right here. I'll go ahead and copy them and paste them over to our artboard like this. And then I can simply go ahead and create a duplicate of our layout object by pressing Ctrl and D or Command and D and Mac. And then inside of this duplicate, I can go ahead and place this icon right here by simply dragging and dropping that inside like this. Notice how it has also affected the hierarchy. That is before the grapes was outside this row and now it is inside of the row. Similarly, I'll go ahead and create the other icon labels as well.
I've gone ahead and dragged and dropped each icon into its separate layout object and also added some background color for each icon label. Now let's say I want to create a layout from these icon labels. So I'll go ahead and select all of the icon labels and I can select this option right here that is layout from selection or I can hit the keyboard shortcut as well that would be shift L to create a layout and drive. So that's a handy shortcut to create layouts. You will notice we got a column layout because the icon labels were placed from top to bottom. I figured we want a column layout and that's why we get a column layout like this. Let's go ahead and change its alignment to be center. That is here, it is top center. And then we can change the vertical gap like this. Let's set it to 20 and we get something like this. Let's go ahead and change our column layout to a row instead like this. Add some horizontal gap and place it in the center. I will notice one of the icon labels is overflowing from the artboard. And if we go ahead and clip the same, it is hidden like this. Instead, what we want is to have this layout take the width of our artboard, that is the maximum width. And if anything is overflowing, that overflowing past that amount, it should go to a new line that is wrap into a new row. Let's go ahead and see how to do the same. That is, first of all, I will set this layout items sizing as fixed for the width and set the width as 500. That is also of our artboard. And then in the no wrap option, I'll go ahead and set it to wrap like this. I will go ahead and wrap any item that would have been overflowing into a new row like this. And I can go ahead and control the alignment. I can control the spacing like this. And even if I add more elements, the same will get wrapped into new rows. And the same is also true for columns as well. That is instead, if I create a column layout and then if I go ahead and disable the no wrap for now and set a fixed height, let's say something like this. And now if I go ahead and set wrap like this, I'll go ahead and create a new column when things overflow the given height if it is fixed. Now go ahead and create a filled container for these icon labels as well. Now I have something like this that is the parent row layout. Inside of that I have the icon labels. I can align them to the left, to the right or to the center as well and I can change the padding as well. Now instead of a set horizontal gap, I want the gap to be evenly distributed based on the width of the parent row layout. To do that, I can go ahead and click on this alignment icon once like this, and it will go ahead and distribute the spacing evenly between the elements like this. And now if I go ahead and increase or decrease the width of the parent row layout, the spacing is evenly distributed. Now when we do something like this, the horizontal gap is used as the minimum gap. That is if I go ahead and set it to a bigger number, let's say 30. And now if I go ahead and decrease it, and once the gap reaches 30, it won't go below that like this and it will wrap. And if I disable wrap, then you will see the width of the parent decreases, but the spacing between it does not decrease. 
In Rai, we can add animation to layouts and get smooth transitions between layout property changes. That is, to add a layout animation, we can go ahead and add one like this. And from the drop down, I'll go ahead and choose custom. By default, the behavior is if we change any of the properties, we get a instant change. That is, if I do that from the inspector, we get a static instant change. If I want a animation in between that change, save with in this case, and go ahead and create a custom layout animation, give it a transition duration, say 500 milliseconds, and we have the default curve of linear. Now, if I go ahead and change it back to say 50% width, we get a animation that is the interpolation from that 80% to 50%. And for a better animation, I can change the curve to say a basic elastic curve. And if I change it again, we get an animation like this. Now you will notice the children, that is the layout children, do not animate. They switch their position still like before. That is the static behavior. To add animations to those as well, that is the layout children, we have to add the layout animation property the same as well. So select all the layout children and add a layout animation. And in this case, we'll leave it to inherit. It will go ahead and simply inherit the animation properties. That is the duration, the curve settings from the parent layout. In this case, our row layout. Now, if I go ahead and change the layout properties, notice how the layout children will animate as well. So that's how we can create responsive layouts in Rive and add animations to the same as well to make them truly interactive.